our three officials, Tony Chiazza, Matt Potter, and Mike Nardone, and the Red Foxes will open up with the game's first possession on the offensive end. Iona is going to get up in Maris shorts, half court, full court, three quarter court, all night long, and try to wear out Maris. Isaiah Brickner giving to Ingo on the three point line. Devon Coley, the handoff, Gardner, short, and the jumper. Ingo does a terrific job. Tim for Maris getting on the offensive boards. Did you like their looks on their first possession? Not bad. You can pay attention to where their misses are coming from. If the misses are short, you have to wonder if Maris has the legs playing in the extra game this weekend in this tournament. Matchup will focus on all night long. Gardner and Junior Joseph, Nelly Junior Joseph for the Gales. Dana Jenkins missing from long range. Gemma, the seven-footer, is there for the putback. He opened up the scoring last night with a three-pointer out on the perimeter. Well, Gemma's not a guy that's going to go off and get a lot of rebounds in, in traffic, but that one, he just elevated with the long arms over the top. Pressure by the Gales in the backcourt. Eric John Luis, co Mac Defensive Player of the Year, along with Manhattan's Josh Roberts. John Dunn went over the pressure quite a bit this morning at shoot around, and Patrick Gardner is the key component to beating this pressure. He must help them not only get it in, but also bring it up if the guards are pressuring Iona. What did you take away from John Dunn in our conversation with him? Well, it, he's happy the way they're playing. That's obvious, you know, regarding their season they had. And, you look at Maris, and the thing about them, though, they're playing with a lot of confidence and with house money. Junior Joseph, and a nice job by Noah Harris to get back in transition. Harris is going to be called for the foul. That's his first team's first. Well, Maris, one thing, they have to be patient against Iona, and Iona's pressure will force you into this type of situation. A block shot on the jumper. You must identify who's guarding you. And that time, Nelly Jr. Joseph was out on the perimeter. They need to keep moving the ball. Iona as a team averaging five and a half blocks per game. Third in the nation entering tonight. 91 more blocks, now 92 more blocks than their opponents during this college basketball season. Jr. Joseph. Empty trip at the line. This is Gardner, Patrick Gardner, six foot ten, getting it inside. Ingo with the bucket, and the first of the night for the Red Fox. Uh, Gardner showing his skills early, bringing the ball up against the press, then delivering the perfect dive at the rim. Gemma out on the three-point line, giving off for Nelly Jr. Joseph. Walter Clayton Jr., the Mac Player of the Year, buries the first three-pointer of the game, and the Gales up by three. Ramirez is in deep trouble if the guards from Iona start ringing it in from downtown. Walter Clayton, 44% on the season from three-point land. On the turnover, the three is good from the corner for Jenkins. Gemma with the first bucket of the game. Maris trailing for the first time here in the MAC tournament. And now the Red Fox is down six. Well, Patrick Gardner beat the press, but then he's got to stop his dribble and try to find the open man. He got trapped at the, at the midcourt line and just fumbled it away. And then Iona will turn those turnovers into buckets. Gardner strong to the rim, but denied. And out of bounds to the Gales. Patrick Gardner has certainly put together. A terrific story here for the 22-23 basketball season for John Dunn and Marist. Gardner got swiped down below with the body, but this was passed on the call. Good backdoor pass and a foul called. Jenkins receiving the pass from Clayton from up top. Iona is in rhythm tonight and in the back door cut to the rim and this my friend looked like a clean block Isaiah Brickner called for the foul Marist as his team has done terrific on the defensive end in terms of block shots had 10 and it's quarterfinal victory against Quinnipiac Jenkins is so important for Iona. He and Walter Clayton Jr. just are just totally in sync. Jenkins, a junior from Dallas, Texas, and Dallas Hillcrest High School. 8-0 Iona run. 
Almost three minutes off the clock. Again, the pressure. And at times last night, Tim, Maris had difficulty with the St. Peter's pressure. And Iona can dial it up as we see. Well, they had a big lead at halftime, and St. Peter's kept the heat on it. Maris did, was not impressive how they attacked it. And they know tonight they must be much better against the pressure. Lob intended for Nelly Jr. Joseph out of bounds. And Maris will take over down 10 2 early on. Jenkins trying to get Junior Joseph involved early, which he wasn't last night. He didn't get going until the second half. And good idea to try to get him some touches down in the paint early. Jaden Daughtry, first year player from Fresh Meadows, New York, into the game for the Red Foxes. Brickner, freshman, is the primary ball handler, along with Noah Harris. Gardner missing on the three, ball batted out. Possession continues for the Red Foxes. Maris, the game plan tonight. One of the, the keys on the offensive end is try to space the, the floor and take some threes. Maris early on, cold from the field, especially behind the three-point line. Now 0 for 5. John Luis. Front rim, no. Brickner, the rebound. Looking to push, and now will show the patience ahead for Dodger. Harris will give John Luis that shot on the outside. He's more of a driver. Drive here by Gardner, and he picks up the bucket. And Maris within six. Well, John Dunn has to be happy early that Patrick Gardner is very involved in every aspect of the offense. Walter Clayton Jr. elevates, shot spins out, Cooley is there for the rebound. Gardner's three almost all the way down, but it rims out. Not sure how that stays out when Gardner just shook his head. Clayton losing it, out of bounds off Maris. One one to shoot. And with a timeout in play, we keep it right here. Iona out to a strong start. Number one seed. Eric John Luis has the ball go in and out of his hands, and Marist will take over. Well, Rick Pitino not happy. He probably shouldn't have thrown the ball to Nelly Jr. Joseph on that possession. He did not have good space. We take a look at tonight's starting line. It's brought to you by Ready Nutrition. That one falling off the rim. Iona going the other way. Clayton Jr. And on his first three, misses on that attempt. And Maris, again, will take over. Maris in this one. Down early on, but within six. Iona, 0 of 3 from the field and two turnovers on its last five possessions. Maris only has four points, but Patrick Gardner has been very, very aggressive, and that's exactly what Maris needs to do to try to stay in and win this game, because especially against the pressure, he's got to help bring the ball up the court. He can be that tall outlet over the top, but he's been also aggressive going to the rim and had 1-3 go in, all, almost all the way in, and then came out. Anton Brookshire has checked in for Iona, replacing Walter Clayton Jr. Brickner. Terrific performance, career high in points against Winnipeg in the quarterfinals. Here is Brickner on the three-point line, too strong, Cooley offensive board. And Ferris has checked in for the Red Foxes, 6'3 Jr. Again, Gardner working against Jr. Joseph, keeps the pivot foot. Misses on the shot, Eric John Luis, the rebound for the Gales. Real good defense by Iona. Nice contest on the outside against Gardner. The five on the floor right now for the Iona Gales, brought to you by Ready Nutrition. Gardner backing in, going to his left. Soft jump hook with the left hand right there for Patrick Gardner. And 
and Maris within four. Maris should not run any half-court offense unless Patrick Gardner at least puts his fingertips on the ball. You mentioned last night they weren't getting into him early enough in the clock. You see a change here tonight with that. Oh, he's so important. He's going to play like a point forward, point center, point guard. And there, John Luis. John Luis just 26% on the season from behind the three-point line. Knocks down that three-pointer. And the lead up to seven for Iona. And he looked very confident on that one. And last night, Niagara didn't even guard him on the outside, but... And Patrick Gardner, he helps bring the ball up against the press and play the physical game as well. Nice little soft touch over the top. And no contest at all. And John Louis. Eric John Luis, co-defensive player of the year once again in the MAC this season with Josh Roberts of Manhattan taking a seat. Rick Patino got strong production from Sadiku Ibinaya, who is on the floor right now for the Gales. He had eight points last night in the victory against the Niag Niagara Purple Eagles. Shema coming out on the ball handler, Ferris. Ferris, no good. Shema, the rebound. <laughs> Ivy Ayo with the bucket. First year forward from Ghana. Again, eight points last night. And whatever production they get off the bench, that's almost gravy. Ivy I mean, Ayo is just <laughs> confident. We talked to him a little bit today, and he said... We're winning tonight. That's the first. <laughs> Hello, good luck. Yes, we're winning. Thank you. Put it on the back pages. Well, he didn't play in the first game against Mount St. Mary's, but he gave Brickettino some real good minutes. So far tonight, the same deal. Last night he took a charge. He was physical in the lane, and it was important because they do not have a deep bench. Harris into the paint. Challenging against Shema, and now Harris trailing the play. Harris should have kicked that ball out to the three-point line. Shema, Maris fans behind us wanted a carry. As the ball went high in the air, he ended up stepping on the end line. And with that, Maris will take over down by nine. So when Noah Harris drives the ball into the gap, unless he has a clear lane to the rim, and that time all the help came in, he had open players on the outside to drive and kick for the three. Daughtry, shot falls off the rim. Daughtry hard to the floor. Well, the foul is going to be called on Osborne Schemmel. I like what John Dunn is doing against the pressure. Last night against St. Peter's, they were almost just hoping to get it over half court and then run their offense. Against Iona, you cannot do that. They will eat you up, spit you out, and swallow you to death and choke you for the night because of the fact they try to wear you out and then they'll trap you in different spots on the floor. But if you can try to go to the rim and beat the press at the rim, that's the only way that Maris can win this game tonight. And so far, so good for, for them attacking. Now, they haven't finished as well as they want, but they are very aggressive. Daughtry last night, 7 points, 10 rebounds. Second time this season he's gone double figures and rebounds. Schemmel will take a break. Ellie Jr. Joseph back on the floor for the Gales. Jr. Joseph did not have a rebound last night in the first half. Rick Patino quoted and telling us today, message was simple at halftime. You don't rebound in the second half. He had six rebounds in the second half. He said, if you don't rebound in the second half, we're going home. Well, I think they have to give some touches early, too. Get him involved in the game, and that will bring other aspects of his game to the forefront. Harris looking to cut into a seven-point deficit. Hits on the three-pointer. Maris first of the game. They open up 0-7 from behind the line. John Dunn told his team this morning, we're going to space it, we're going to push it, we're going to shoot a lot of threes. Maris 31% on the season from behind the line. Clayton Jr. looking to answer. Strong move by Walter Clayton Jr. A strong move for sure. I mean, he is a powerful guard. Quick, can shoot it from the outside, but fearless at the rim. Clayton Jr. from Lake Wells, Florida. Sutton 
jumper is good. All of a sudden, Harris, cold early on, starting to find their footing and the confidence on the perimeter. Well, the key against Iona is not only beat the pressure, but in the half court, move the ball a little bit because Iona play back a little bit in the half court defensively. They get up in your face, full court, and at the half court, but once they get in the, into the into the lane, they pull back a little bit. Walter Clayton Jr. Joseph Jr. forward out of Nigeria at the line. Mac Rookie of the Year back in 2021. All Mac first team for the second straight year. Player of the week during the regular season five times for the Iona Gales. Harris will go pick up the basketball. Shema at 6'9", 6'10", up on the ball, long arms. They're going to try to trap in the corner. The three bigs in the corner. Gardner trapped by the seven-footer Shema. And the six-foot-nine junior Joseph. Well, John Dunn is motioning Gardner to start deep and then flash to the ball. He's an easy target when he's just standing there, and he needs to get the ball not in the corner, more in the middle of the floor. And a foul call with Harris trying to inbound the basketball. Third team foul on the Gales. Danis Jenkins picking up the personal. Well, that's a good sign for John Dunn if they're going to call the, the holds in the backcourt while Iona is pressing. They get the steal on the inbound. Shema the dunk. Right now, Maris, they have too many guys in the backcourt. They need to space the floor a little bit more to open it up so they can dribble drive against this pressure. Paris trying to use the screen by Gardner. Whips it inside for Gardner. Gardner going back to his left, called for the travel violation. Well, this is what John Dunn wants to do. He wants to get Gardner in a pick and roll situation and real good steal by Jenkins. And Maris just struggling to get it even inbounds. Isaiah Brickner comes back onto the floor. John Dunn talking with Noah Harris. As Harris takes a seat. Harris has not led at any point here in the first half. Walter Clayton Jr. A little strong on the three. Bruckner gets in front of Barrett John Luis out of bounds to the Red Foxes. Well, we saw it on this previous possession where Gardner was called for the travel, but Maris knows that Iona will switch those ball screens, and they're trying to get Gardner in a situation where he is defended by a guard rolling to the rim. And that pass out of bounds right up the sideline, and it will be Iona basketball. Where Maris just inbounded the ball. Now Gardner's going to play likely 35 plus minutes in this game, but where do you try to get him his rest? Uh, during the timeouts, during the, <laughs> during the TV, during the TV timeouts, you know, they cannot afford to have him off the floor hardly at all. Clayton Jr. finding an opening. Uh, against Ferris. Mac player of the year with the bucket, extending the lead for Iona up to nine. For 21 against Mount St. Mary's in Iona's quarterfinal victory, 22 last night against Niagara in the semifinals. Iona has hit on five of its last seven field goal attempts. Tyler St. Percy into the game, out of bounds off the Red Foxes. Four turnovers now on their last four possessions. Well, that's a little disheartening for Maris to the point where their defense has not been good in the last few possessions. They need to get down and dirty and try to create something from their defense. Jenkins, the floater, doesn't get it to fall. Ball tipped back up and in. Eric John Luis credited with the basket. Eric John Luis, just a powerful wing. Guard with those long arms playing very well so far tonight. The lead up to 11 for Iona. Gardner against Junior Joseph. 
Shot clock now for Maris inside 10. And Ferris elevates and hits on the jumper from up top. Oh, good job by Ferris. He's kind of sizing up. Nelly Jr. Joseph. Iona continues to switch those ball screens. Junior Joseph to the corner. Three-pointer no good by John Luis. Nice find by Junior Joseph. He felt the double, found the open shooter in the corner. A Gardner against Junior Joseph. Patrick Gardner with the bucket. And he's got six. He's three of nine from the field. Again, Maris needs to go through him on every possession. Joseph setting up in the paint, trying to face up, and called for the travel violation. And with that turnover, Maris will have the basketball when we come back down 24-17 against Iona in the MAC championship. Here it goes. Um, uh, so, I, I talk to my plants like they're babies. Do you? Yes, I do, don't I? Oh, my little butt. For the year honors, my partner Tim Welsh was... The Iona and Mac Coach of the Year. Back-to-back -back years, three regular season titles. Under Tim Welch in the mid and late 1990s. The resume, at that point, you weren't putting the finishing touches on it, but boy, your time at Iona, that was a nice resume booster, as we like to call well, it. Well, it's a great program. It is. Rick Pitino is continuing the tradition, but Maris is going to have something to say about that. They, Good game plan tonight. I like that they're using Gardner to break the press. He needs to turn and be aggressive. But he's got Kelly Jr. Joseph one on one in the middle of the floor without a trap coming. Blow by him and make things happen for himself or others. Now to head coach Rick Patino in recent weeks, late stages of the MAC regular season, talking about Patrick Gardner and these two teams met late in the regular season. Said. He's got the makings and out of bounds off Gardner, Iona basketball. He said he's got the makings of a good European pro basketball player. We talked to him today. He actually said you could see him as being a late first round, early second round pick in the NBA draft come June. Well, there's no doubt about that. But right there, the, another turnover from Harris. They're going to throw it to Gardner. We've got to run some misdirection, get him moving away from the ball, then coming back. That time they just trying to throw it right over the top when he was stationary. Blake Jr., the miss. And we'll stay on this end of the floor. Foul called as Junior Joseph was in position underneath the basket. He was in position. He just parked himself right under the rim. And no one even attempted to block him out. He's hard to move when he gets down there. Cam Ferris called for the foul for the Red Foxes. Here's Jenkins. Brickner runs to the brick wall. Junior Joseph. Junior Joseph, offensive rebound, and a foul is going to be called again. Javon Cooley going to the floor. And you see, he's blocked out there, but they need help. <laughs> they need help down low. He's just a brick wall down there. So the guards of Maris and the wings, they have to get down there and get in the mix on the glass. Junior Joseph goes 6'9", 240. Jenkins on the baseline, one-handed floater, no good. And Gardner finally picks it up. Under seven to go, first half, MAC championship. Iona looking for a MAC title. No stranger to being in this situation. Marist, a championship game for the first time in the MAC. Ferris working against Clayton Jr. Shot off the mark. Jr. Joseph with the bucket. Maris missing on that attempt. Here's Clayton Jr. Reverse Cooley the rejection. And the foul is going to be called on Michael Jefferson. He'll pick up his first. This is good defense. Maris needs to do this. They need to give the help when Walter Clayton Jr. drives to the rim. And that last half court possession for Maris, an empty one. John Dunn not happy. The ball never got inside the three point line, nor did Patrick Garner touch it. Anton Brookshire back on the floor for the Gals. 
Walter Cray uh, Clayton Jr. gets a breather. Well, no, Jr. Joseph doing a good job on Patrick Garner, denying him all over the floor. Brookshire, the denial there, getting in the passing lane against Cooley. Harris last night, St. Peter's down 21 at the half, came back, got to within three in the late stages of the second half. Maris able to hold on, but time and time again, as St. Peter's got back into a game, Maris had difficulty inbounding the ball, not only after made baskets, but on sideline plays as well. Brickner may have gotten away with a travel. That shot falls off the rim, and Brickner kind of holding his head with his two hands, saying, how did that not fall? Good spacing. That was a pretty good possession. They're still a good job in the half court. Iona is so hard to guard. Now trying to get it inside to Junior Joseph. Bobbles it, regroups, looking for Barrett John Luis on the baseline. Iona turnover. Uh, Maris has had a couple of these. That ball again. It's two of those have been all the way down and out. Here's Brickner on the drive inside. B to Daughtry. Daughtry fouled. He'll go to the line for a pair. Well, one of the keys of attacking this pressure, not only in the full court, but in the half court, and this is a good delivery. And Maris needs to continue to do this. But they have good court spacing. They dribble drive in, into the lane and find the open man. But one of the keys is make sure you keep your dribble. Don't pick up your dribble because when you do, they attack with one and sometimes two defenders. Champ Week rolls on next at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 Pacific over on ESPN with a Pac-12 championship game, Arizona against UCLA, also available on the ESPN app. Seems like we've been destined for that matchup in the Pac-12. Good ones last night, the Arizona-Arizona State game. Arizona just, their weapons are multiple on the offensive end. And UCLA, we know how good they are, especially defensively. Maris within five as we approach five minutes to go in the opening half. Gardner going to the floor. Junior Joseph the Mitch mismatch nearly throws it away. Brookshire with seven to shoot. Brookshire losing it. Gardner right under the basket coming away with the basketball. Maris defense has been very good in the last few possessions and Iona a little disjointed, not spaced enough. Trying to dribble into trap. Rickner unable to get it over the rim. And Iona going the other way. And you don't get those back. You have to take advantage of that opportunity. That will bite you. Walter Clayton Jr. makes Ferris pay as he picks up the bucket. He's now up to nine. That sometimes happens. You miss an easy one and you put your head down. You don't run back and take care of business on defense. And Clayton will attack you and burn you when that happens. Double in the corner. I know they have an 0 for 5 on a previous possession before that basket. Harris gets a look up top for a three. That one no good. Clayton, strong rebounder for a guard into the front court. Under four to go, first half. Joseph the rebound three red jerseys around him and a foul called on Maris Under four to go Iona is not trailed in the first half right now up by seven well, against Maris the Red is hanging in there, but these easy opportunities need to go down for them and options is what a home court up in Burlington Brookshire strong on the three and out of bounds to Maris. Maris, very fortunate on that one. And their guards can't stand and watch on the perimeter when Iona takes three. They have to take two or three steps in. Maris.
Ferris getting a call for the push on that one. Ferris knocked over Walter Clayton Jr. He's trying to get open. Walter Clayton Jr. was in his way and he just shoved him to the floor. Good call by Tony Chaz. Clayton Jr. on the inbounds, 20 to shoot for the Gales. John Dunn saying, wait a minute, they're holding us on every play, and then you call that, but the refs have done a good job of balancing their calls. Walter Clayton Jr. on the reverse side, and I own an L up 28-19. Well, you know he's going right, because that's what he, where he makes his money. And you force him left, and somehow, some way, he always finds a way to go back to his right. Patrick Gardner, huge three for Marist as we approach three minutes to go. Well, again, that's the first time he's touched the ball in a few possessions. They need to keep doing that. He's so skilled and smart. Two possession game, under three remaining, first half. Iona has not trailed. Brooks Shire, off glass and in. Again, any bench production that Iona gets in this game, both in minutes and point production, is of value. Brooks and Shire. a steal again in the backcourt. Brooks Shire, a little pesky guy coming in off the bench. Only plays 10 minutes a game, but he's been very solid tonight. Walter Clayton Jr. misses from long range. Ball pounding around. Eric John Luis for Clayton Jr. Sort of in between there. And Brickner finally comes away with it. Oh, Iona really putting the pressure on Maris on the backboards. Coley denied by Clayton Jr. Out of bounds to Iona. Well, what can't this man do? He does everything, including resisting at the rim. Walter Clayton Jr., where did he come from? No, he was a great football player in high school. And he's got the toughness, the quickness, and the ability to elevate the timing. I mean, I, uh, Iona on a roll right now on both ends. Confidence building, the bench helping, and everything. Revolving around Walter Clayton Jr. When you have guys making plays like that, everyone lifts their game. Gardner with eight. Splashes home from that jumper. He's a double figures with 11. Argentina not happy. Walter Clayton Jr. got switched up on Gardner on that possession and kind of just took a step back and didn't deny. Caught it on the wing. Easy shot over the top. Junior Joseph on the feed, missing initially, and he's there for the putback. A little crash at the rim, but a good old flop call. Last one I saw was in January. Officials don't like to call that, and they're not calling it any. Back iron, no. I think Percy going to the floor. Reckner looking inside. Gardner, dangerous pass, but he got it in there. Coming up on the All-State All Halftime Report catch you up with Jordan Cornette, Coach Crean, and Wojo in studio. Walter Clayton Jr. is just a tireless player. Last night he rolled his ankle. Second half of their win over Niagara it looked like it was pretty serious. He went, up, went to the sidelines, retied his, his shoe, and popped up, came right back in. Gardner continues to lead the way for the Red Foxes. He's got 12. Other players have combined for nine. That's who's told it right there to make it a nine-point game. 
Gardner will take a bre breather right here. Well, here's your rest. I believe you yeah, want there you go. The 21 seconds. You got a time. Yeah. A little one three one zone out of that timeout from Marist. Jefferson back to Walter Clayton Jr. with one. Brookshire did get it off, misses the shot. Iona will go into the locker room early stages of the second half. He needs help, but he, he the help will be provided once he gets his touches because he'll draw the attention of Iona and he will then find the open man because he's unselfish and a highly skilled passer. Clayton Jr., first shot of the second half, rims out. Gardner is underneath. Picked up a double-double, fourth of the season last night in the semifinal victory against St. Peter's. Iona looking for its 16th trip to the NCAA tournament. Maris won it back-to-back -back years during the 1980s in the Rick Smiths era. Harris finding Ingo inside. Good start to the second half for the Red Foxes. Uh, real nice offense. Patience. They reversed the ball, had the spacing, made the extra, extra pass at the rim. Maris never led at any point in the first half. Never trailed in each of their first three wins here in Atlantic City. Shema from Clayton Short. Junior Joseph. Just like last night, early on in the second half, an offensive board to keep a possession alive. Red jersey swarming around Junior Joseph up top. Harris had everybody in the lane, defending the paint, defending the rim, and Owen got out to contest on the perimeter. That was a little too tight for Iona to make those second and third passes right in the paint, but they did a good job and then finally found the open man at the three-point line. Rickner, Clayton Jr., and Walter Clayton Jr. nearly had the turnover right there in the steal. John Dunn pleading with this team to get going here. Well, it's a uh, lesson in perseverance. <laughs> to try to get the ball over half court and Harris now is going to really space the floor they have five out on the perimeter Gardner over Shema no Ingo active on the offensive boards and out of bounds off Marist John Dunn did not like that shot by Patrick Gardner and not something you see very often, him forcing the issue. Keep an eye on Maris and their fatigue here in the second half. Jenkins a few moments ago hitting from downtown. Little hesitation. Lost it. Junior Joseph with eight. Jenkins now behind the back with three. Looking for the opening. The runner, no. Engel will track it down. Good defense on that set by Maris, just not allowing the dribble penetration. The handle and the footwork by the big man. Engel again keeping the possession alive. And on a good help on the drive by Gardner. Harris against Junior Joseph. It is physical down low right now on both ends. Physical. Maris missing their shots short, and Iona on force there. Jenkins was looking cross court for Walter Clayton Jr. Clayton Jr. was looking for the timeout. And the ball going right between Rick Patino and Clayton Jr. Actually to the right of Rick Patino. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Iona up by 10, opening minutes of the second half. Work to do here. Billy Chambers, the head coach of Iona's women's basketball program. They won the regular season title. They win the MAC tournament title. They're on their way to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2016. Kickball. 
It seems like Maris came out of the locker room with a different idea how to attack in the half court. They are really opening up the court, trying to dribble back to the rim. Again, it's been physical early stages of the second half. Junior Joseph picks up the fouls. Nice delivery here. And this is why Maris needs to continue to go through Gardner because he will attract that second defender and a high and he's a highly skilled, unselfish passer. Jaden Daughtry at the line for Maris. We'll cap off Champ Week tomorrow with two more championship games on ESPN in the app. The SEC title game is at 1 Eastern, New Central. Then the final automatic tourney ticket will be punched by the winner of the American Championship game. Houston, Marcus Sasser went out with an injury today. We'll see if he plays tomorrow. And Tulane has had a really good season under Ron Hunter. Jenkins with a great elevation, and he hits on the jump. Uh, just plays so under control. He knows where he can go, and when they back up just a little bit he hesitates and then rises up with that mid-range game Salton in trouble and called for the violation was thinking about calling a timeout right in front of us just over the midcourt line Turnover for Marist and own a basketball up by 10 with 3.55 off the clock. Well, we talked about the first half. It, one thing you cannot do is dribble across half court and then pick up your dribble with nowhere to go. Pick up your dribble, you better be, be ready to pass it quickly against Iona. Shema going back door. John Luis unable to hit. Oh, nice pass by Shema from deep. Directing traffic. Salt. Five on the shot clock. Paris to the corner. Harris no good. Ingo and Shema battling for it. And it's Daughtry going right back to the rim and throwing it down. Daughtry with authority. Harris missed a few of those in the first half. And that one was not to be denied. Maris Faithful on their feet. And a foul will be called on Daughtry. With that, a timeout on the floor. Maris Scrappy coming out of the half and aggressiveness at the rim. Jaden Daughtry, not to be denied. Down the road. That's a good, a good thought. Maybe we'll have them over to the house this summer. We'll get together right, right at the Welsh house. They're always welcome. That group. You've got some. You've got some planning to do. Well, it has got some planning to do too. And Rick Patino wasn't happy going into that last timeout. Is Maris? Settled in here in the second half. I really like what John Dunn's doing. They're spacing the court. They're, they're not really running plays. They're just moving the ball and then trying to go one on one in space. Ferris getting inside draws the foul. So this is not about scouting right now for Iona, and no one does a better job of scouting than their staff. This is about getting down and dirty and getting into a stance and cutting off angles and dribble penetration. That's what Maris is trying to do. They're not running any more plays. They are going five out, four round one, moving the ball, and then going one-on-one -on -one to the rim. And Ferris at the line, hits on the first. March is here, and ESPN Tournament Challenge is back. Scan the QR code to download the app and play the number one bracket game. Create a group, invite your friends, and get ready or the madness. Sign up for the ESPN Tournament Challenge today and test your bracketology knowledge. One more for Ferris. It has been the supporting cast early on here in the second half. 
for the Red Foxes. Gardner, their leading scorer, with 13, 5 of 14 from the field. He's not sitting, he's standing with his teammates on the bench right now. Clayton Jr. looking for an answer. No good, and go the rebound, falling down. And out of bounds to Iona. Ferris pleading his case. Engel falling to his floor, uh, to the floor there. And Ferris could not maintain possession. Now, this is not an easy game to officiate. Both teams are very physical right now, but Mike Stevens, the supervisor of officials, put an excellent crew on this game tonight. Bob for Junior Joseph. Now he puts the ball on the floor. Tony Chayaza, Matt Potter, Mike Nardone, our three officials for this MAC championship game. Jenkins, the air ball on the three attempts. Maris basketball within six. Well, we talked about Maris and what they needed to do defensively, but more important, they get these rebounds so that they don't have to inbound the ball and face the pressure. Noah Harris on the switch. Junior Joseph has him. Salton spins, misses, and go. Great attempt on the putback, and Stefan Ingo will have a pair at the line. Well, Stefan Ingo has done a very good job tonight, just kind of moving around, getting rebounds out of, out of his area. You see how wiry and long he is. Good job on the weak side, and Shema didn't block him out at all. Averages over two and a half offensive rebounds a game, three years at the University of Maine from Ontario, Canada. Shema the foul, his third. Maris, as a team, perfect at the line so far tonight. Ingo's trying to keep that alive right here. Maris got to the line plenty last night against St. Peter's. Michael Jefferson on the floor for the Gales. Made over 40 attempts last night. Ingo keeps Maris perfect at the line. And a four-point game. Well, Junior Joseph needs, needs a touch. And the guards have dominated tonight for Iona, but he's got to get some post-ups. you got to stop that first, though, because Jenkins is as good as you can get from the mid-range. That's really poor ball screen coverage for Maris. Jenkins, the bucket, the near steal. Out of bounds at the end of his bench area. And Maris is going to inbound in a very dangerous place as Gardner will come back onto the floor. Ingo will take a breather. Well, John Dunn was trying to buy a couple minutes for Gardner, maybe get to the under 12 timeout, but he's sensing that he's needed, and he is correct against this pressure. Ferris on the inbounds gets it into Harris. Well, that's the thing. You just got to get it in, and they will back the pressure off. But if they see you go, go into that corner, that's when they trap in their full denial. Harris strong on the three-point attempt. Gardner tracks it down. Harris working against Jefferson. Harris with seven. Feeds the corner. St. Percy. Up top, Gardner gets the look and knocks down the three-pointer. Well, again, that's the new scheme this half. They totally changed their offense from the first half to this half. They're not running any place. It's five out, dribble penetrating the gap. If Iona overhelps, they'll kick it to the open shooter on the perimeter. Junior Joseph unable to hit, but draws the foul. Salton picks up the personal foul. That was a real good drive by Nelly Jr. Joseph. Not normally his game, putting the ball on a deck, but showed dexterity and the ability to twist and find that smallest window at the rim. At the line for two, three points, eight rebounds. 
All Mac first team for the second straight year. 19 double doubles had a stretch of 11 straight games during the regular season. Double digits and points and rebounds. Well, when you talk to coaches in the Mac, you said, "Well, we're doing a good job on Junior Joseph." Then you look up, he's got 18 and nine. He does it kind of quietly and without fanfare. And they do sometimes go multiple possessions without looking for him, but. He's been very active in the second half. Not only on offense, he's doing a good job on Gardner in the press. Cam Ferris off the bench in a big role in his first year, or his junior year at Maris. Here's Gardner, short. And here's Clayton Jr. racing into the front court. Does not have numbers, forcing the action, unable to finish in transition. And now Maris looking to go the other way and push it. Just couldn't find that opening. He's elevated, he twisted, just couldn't put it home. St. Percy with the throw down. Three point game. Well, the spacing allowed the dunk, the dribble drive, and the dunk. Everyone was out on the perimeter. The weak side was stretched out to the three point line, allowing the penetration and finish. Clayton Jr. looking inside for Junior Joseph. He is fouled on his way to the basket. And with that whistle, we've got a timeout on the floor. Well, Maris has crept back into this game. Execution on the offensive end. Not called plays. It's just about basketball. Space out, driving to line for a pair. Joseph, perfect two of two from the line. Iona extends its lead to five. And in the pressure again, the face guarding with total denial. They'll trap if you put it in a spot that's dangerous. Iona, its largest lead of the game at 11. Brickner with a strong finish, his first points of the game. That's what you have to do, you have to make them pay. You can't be hesitant even when you bring, get the ball over half court. You've got to keep attacking against this pressure. Brickner had a career high 21 in the quarterfinal victory against Quinnipiac. Knocked down five threes in that game. John Luis, no on the three. Gardner flat footed, tried to secure the ball. And out of bounds off Iona. Well, Brickner did a good job. He, in the first half, he kind of picked his dribble up a couple times right at half court. This time, the, the spacing was there and the nice finish with the left over the defenders. Maris, its fourth game here in the MAC tournament, the uh, number 11 overall seed. First time an 11 seed has ever made it all the way to the championship game. It's hard man pressure right now. I Iona has taken off the traps. Cam Ferris hits on the three pointer. We are tied at 46. Now you wondered about the tee. For Maris. Fourth game, but they're seemingly getting stronger by the minute. Gardner will be called for the foul. Again, they've been on the attack, and here just a simple little dribble handoff, a little shuffle, and Walter Clayton Jr. gets caught napping on defense out of his stance, not attacking the shooter and closing out. Saw the stat there just a moment ago. The note, last tie at 2-2 early on in the first half. Shemmel looking inside for Junior Joseph. Bodies flying. Brickner comes up with it. And Brickner is bumped. That's going to be the 14th foul on the gallows. With 9.47 remaining. Well, the first half, Iona was getting all... They were getting all the loose balls. They were up on the floor. Their guards were rebounding. Now Maris is involved with the toughness plays. One thing you can't do, though, against Iona is relax at all, even on these simple sideline out-of-bounds plays, because they're in total front denial. Brickner gets it back. Brickner trying to step it home. Denied at the rim. Very 
John Luis with his best. Walter Clayton Jr. Imitation. Another denial right at the rim. Goodness. Gardner takes it on the inbounds. Junior Joseph poked it away, comes up with a steal. Walter Clayton Jr. out for Jenkins. Iona takes the lead right back. Uh, do those two know each other or what? Walter Clayton Jr., the door got closed at the rim. He knew exactly where Davis Jenkins was in the corner. Rick Pitino told us earlier today, roommates, they've made each other better throughout the course of the season. Rickner, the spin, unable to hit, and a foul call that's going to be on Ingo, and Ingo pleading his case. And we talked about Danis Jenkins and his ability to create off the bounce in his mid-range game. Perfect spot up, ready to catch and shoot. The delivery was right in the shooting pocket. Jenkins and Clayton Jr. both going for 30 in different victories during the regular season against Niagara. Gardner goes to the bench. Just over nine minutes to go. And we may get the minute here on the clock and then the timeout. Clayton Jr. spinning, unable to hit, and the rebound in the hands of Daughtry. Jobs and Daughtry getting in the mix, undersized, but rebounding with the mix. Daughtry had his second game this season in double figures with rebounds, had 10 last night against St. Peter's. Ferris, too strong that time, and Jenkins with a long rebound. A lot for Junior Joseph. In go there, and then Shema is there for the putback. John Dunn will call timeout. If that Maris player beats his defender initially, we've seen the dunks. And open looks at the rim. How do the other players get back here? Is that, is that part of the transition? Well, you have to get yourself in position before the drive, but the problem is you don't want to leave a three-point shooter, so... It really comes down to get, get down and dirty, and you guard your man and guard your yard and stop it. Ferris hit the three that tied the game at 46. Iona now in a 5-0 run. Ferris with three on the clock. No. And the shot clock violation turnover, Red Foxes. John Dunn is pleading with Noah Harris, go get the ball, go help. And he was kind of just hanging around at midcourt. Ferris was having a problem down there on the baseline, and the violation committed. Goal turnovers for Maris. Tim Gardner went to the bench with just over nine to go. We're now under eight remaining. We had the media timeout. He's still on the bench right now. And foul called on Jenkins. Next time he comes on the floor, is it one final stretch? Well, I think John does is trying to buy a little bit of time so he can finish the game with Gardner. Obviously, you've got to be aware of, of fatigue, not only because you're playing Iona, but you're, you're playing the extra game, and that's steal by Maris. And the block by Junior Joseph on Inga, who goes spiraling to the floor. Maris, this is the third breakaway. Looks like a dunk. Coming up nothing because of the extra effort by Iona that time. It was Nelly Jr. Joseph. We've seen it with Barrett John Louise and Walter Clayton Jr. Just highlight film dunk, dunks that weren't there because of the resistance. Fifth block for the Gales, fourth for Jr. Joseph. And now he'll pick up the foul on Gardner. We talked about it before. And last baseline out of bounds. Maris turned it over. He got Shema at 6'11 guarding Harris at 6'1. Getting in his vision. Gardner putting the ball to the floor. Clayton with a swipe. Gardner with the bucket. And he earned that one because it was real good defense by Iona, but he's so crafty with his footwork and that ability kind of just to find that little angle with those long arms with the left. And score in so many different ways. D by Harris on Walter Clayton Jr. And Jr. Joseph attacking and finishing at the rim. 
real smart play by Nelly Junior Joseph. Patrick Garner kind of bit on Walter Clayton and he left Junior Joseph just enough so he could find the lane to the rim. Harris has not led at any point. He tied at 2-2 early on, tied most recently at 46 apiece. Junior Joseph pokes it away. Jenkins ahead of the pack. John Luis, the two-handed throw down. Siona at its best. Constant pressure. They never relent over the course of 40 minutes. Their goal. Some mistakes, and then they take advantage. And there's another. Siona right now on a 9-2 run. And that's frustrating for John Dunn. When you call a timeout, you draw up a play, and the first thing you do is throw it right into press rough. Harris tied the game at 46. Since then, they're just one of six from the field. Deflection by Daughtry on the inbounds. by the Gales after Maris tied it up at 46 on the three by Ferris. Jenkins, three spins out. That's this end of the floor tonight. That was a good out of bounds play by Iona. Maris needs to tighten up their execution, sideline, baseline, and full court out of bounds place. Other end of the floor, Iona is shooting here in the second half. We saw several shots fall off and go halfway down and come back out for the Red Foxes in the first 20 minutes. Daughtry with five. Front rim, no. Walter Clayton Jr. spinning away from the defender in traffic. Questionable shot by Daughtry. Not a good three point shooter. Again, they went a possession, and Gardner did not touch the ball. Gemma on the three point line. This is the three. John Luis inside, unable to connect, gets it back, goes to the reverse side. Barrett John Luis is finding a way to make winning plays all night long in different ways. Defensively, on the glass, dribble driving, shooting from the perimeter. Mac, co defensive player of the year during the regular season. Barrett's putting on the brakes. Gardner answers at the other end with a triple. Well, Junior Joseph took a step back, and Patrick Gardner said, I'm going to take a step back further. Deep range. Gardner had 13 of the 26 from Harris in the first half. He's up to 21. And the turnover right there. Well, Barrett John Louise has earned his meal money tonight. Down in the paint, in the trenches, just finding a way. The extra. Where you have to be careful. You're embarrassed. You have to execute. Getting the ball in is troubling. Gardner went to the floor initially. Clayton Jr., the deflection. Yeah, on these plays against Iona, you, they are not going to let you have the ball easily inbounded. You must be exact. Everybody must move in sync and quickly and come to the basketball. Feels like they sneak a second or third defender on the floor in the timeouts. Gardner inside Daughtry, patience. Gardner with the throwdown as he got it back from Daughtry. Well, that's how you have to attack. You cannot be timid. You must you have to take some chances sometimes over the top. That time, Bears had good spacing, made the extra pass, and Gardner determined. Gardner corrals it and loses it. Jenkins hits on the three-pointer for the Gales. Oh, John Dunn just throwing his hands up with frustration. Gardner had it secured, but again, Iona, pesky. You can't relax for a second against this pressure. Seven-point Iona lead, four to go in regulation. Back championship from Jim Whalen, Boardwalk Hall here in Atlantic City. Junior Joseph picks up the foul. Patrick Gardner, can you believe that one Division I offer came from...
of the regular season and the tournament from Little Cumberland, Rhode Island. Cooley, one foot in the backcourt, one foot in the front court, and Iona comes away with the steal. Clayton Jr. in against Gardner, unable to spin it up over the rim, but draws the foul on Gardner. That's multiple occasions now that out of a timeout, Maris just bunched up, and you must space the court against this pressure. And just kind of winged it in there on a prayer, just to hope to get it inbounds instead of being exact. They had that entire backcourt to throw the ball into the backcourt to get the ball in, but everybody was bunched up right by the sideline. 16 turnovers for Maris. Walter Clayton Jr. at the line. Rick Pitino and the Gales won the MAC tournament title two years ago, knocked out in their opening round game in the quarterfinals against Ryder last year. Rick Pitino just absolutely loves this group. And obviously, had some major injuries during the season to two key players. Slesinski and Cruz Davis, just real good contributors for Iona, but Tighten the rotation. Continue to put on the pressure. Full court and into the half. Ball in the hands of Daughtry against Junior Joseph. Noah Harris. The shot clock inside of 10. Working against Jenkins. Jenkins forces the turnover, 17th of the game. Clayton Jr. for his roommate, Jenkins, who hits another three. And the lead continues. And Harris has done a pretty good job with their half-court offense. Very good half-court defensively, but it's just the loose passing in the half court and against this pressure. Foul called. They've had Daughtry bringing the ball up instead of Harris and Ferris who are on the floor right now. One and one coming up. 17th foul on the Gales. Good job on the attack by Daughtry. He was a little off balance, but he was pushing it. He was not picking his dribble up at half court. And can't convert. Ball batted out, and Clayton Jr. a foul on the sideline on Maris. And it's going to be called on Jaden Daughtry. Daughtry picks up his second. So Walter Clayton Jr. at the free throw line for the Gales right now up 65-53 with under three remaining. He's got his shots, not as efficient as Shima will check in. Shema, pardon me, will check in. But again, Jenkins has picked up, especially here in the second half. Clayton now with 13, but 19 shots from the field overall, hitting on five. Well, normally it's Jenkins who's the creator, and Clay Jr. who's the guy that's make, making the plays, but they're so good playing together that they just take what the defense gives them. They're interchangeable tonight. It's been... Clayton Jr. looking for Jenkins on the perimeter. Noah Harris, sophomore guard from New Jersey, from Manalapan. Here's Gardner up top. Shot clock winding down. Game clock approaching two and a half remaining. Harris could not handle it. Tried for the tie-up instead of foul. Well, give Iona all the credit in the world defensively. Maris got back into this game by spacing the court, taking one, Iona one-on-one -on -one off the dribble. And now Iona is down and dirty defensively and not allowing any penetration into the lane. Barrick John Luis from Lehigh Acres, Florida, third year at Iona, two-time Florida high jump champion in high school. Been the perimeter defense of Barrick John Luis, Walter Clayton Jr., and Danis Jenkins that has worn Maris out over the course of this game. 
Eric John Luis. 6'4, but he plays like he's about 6'9. Rickner back on the floor for the Red Foxes. Daughtry on the three point line. Too strong on the three. Eric John Luis position on the bigger Gardner. Ahead for Junior Joseph, who could not catch up to it. Iona right now on an 11 0 run in the last two minutes. Now, when you're up two touchdowns, you don't need to throw a pass down the field, that's for <laughs> sure. And Rick Patino wasn't happy with that. But he told us today, he said, this time of year, I, I try to be really positive all the time. Ferris fouled on the three attempts. And John Luis pleading his case. Rick Patino. John Dunn right there. Rick Pitino not going to be happy with that as Ferris has three free throws coming up. Well, he's re just reminded his team we've got to work the clock. You know, it's time at this point now, time and score are vital. Run your offense, wait for Maris to gamble, make a mistake, and then take advantage. Extends the defense on this make or miss. They need to take one last shot. See if Iona makes some mistakes against some pressure. Ferris, his third free throw. 13 point Iona lead, just over two minutes remaining. Good job by Shemar on the inbounds. Very smart. Running the baseline, finding a better angle to inbound. Now called on Brickner. That's his second. Two shots the rest of the way for the Gales. Well, the thing you have to love about Iona is they have a lot of pieces that can play dif from different spots on the floor. And you have three really good guards like they, they do. It starts with the pressure, but offensively, they're constantly moving and looking for each other. They're so unselfish. You got the perimeter scoring with Clayton Jr. and Jenkins, and then if you start to take that away, they'll go to their next option. Kelly Jr. Joseph around the rim. It's nice to have options. Now it's nice to have options. It's also nice to have a Hall of Fame coach that's been to multiple Final Fours and knows how to Coach a team into the NCAA tournament, which it looks like Iona will do again under Rick Pitino. Maybe the second time in three seasons under Rick Pitino, the seventh time for Iona since 2011-2012, six of those under former head coach Tim Kloos. Well, Iona, it's traveled well down here from New Rochelle. And we built the Heinz Athletic Center. It's a, just a great home court for them. And this program is built to last. Iona, 146 away from taking now one but two MAC titles back to New Rochelle. The women's team knocking off Manhattan earlier today in the women's championship final. Jenkins hits on the second. Continue to put the pressure on. They're not going to trap out of this, but just make Maris work to get it up. Rickner misses inside on the layup attempt. Well, that's what happens against this Iona pressure. Over 40 minutes, you miss those little shots because of fatigue, but Maris has a lot to be proud of and a lot to build on moving forward with John Dunn. He's an excellent coach. He did a great job at St. Peter's in his tenure there. He's a great hire by Tim Murray. And he's proven again that you can get teams to win in this tournament, but he just didn't have enough weapons tonight. Shot clock winding down. Race for the basketball. Jenkins beats Brickner to it. One minute to go. Ferris hit a three for Maris tying the game at 46. All since then, Iona on a 25-9 run. Jenkins fouled by Brickner. Nice job by John Dunn. He's Told his team to foul only so he could get some of his bench guys into this game. And, you know, Iona overcoming the injuries. And 
You lose two key players right in the middle of the season. That can be devastating for most programs, but they've flourished in the last month and a half. A little change for Iona in the middle of February when Rick Pitino changed the way they practice. He changed the teams in practice. Instead of having Clayton Jr. and Jenkins on the same team, he had them go against each other every day in practice, which up the intensity of the entire team. Patrick Gardner going to the bench for Marist. Iona in 2021, when they won the MAC title, they were the 15th seed in the NCAA tournament, lost to Alabama. Uh, they're going to have a better seed than that this year. I would say at worst a 13, maybe possibly, depending on what's happening in the other conferences, possibly a 12. Gardner embracing Javon Cooley in a long hug before taking a seat. I don't care what they are, 13, a 12. I would not want to face this team. They are playing at a high, high level right now on both ends. Dontre misses on the free throw. Junior Joseph the rebound with 40 seconds remaining. Jenkins leading the way in the second half. 19 of his 24 after coming out of the locker room. Now it's not overset or overused the term or the philosophy or every way you want to break it down that guards win in the NCAA tournament, and Iona has the guards and the goods to win in the tournament. Jenkins, the finishing touches on what's going to turn out to be a 76-55 victory for the Iona Gales. Iona on its way back to the NCAA tournament.